All right, future financial wizards. Today, we're diving into one of the most fundamental concepts in fixed income analysis, the term structure of interest rates. Now, if you've ever wondered how interest rates change with different maturities or why certain rates are higher or lower for longer terms, you're in the right spot. We're going to break down the three main yield curves, spot, par, and forward, and how they help us understand the landscape of interest rates over time. So grab your calculators and let's get started. Now, let's try to understand the term structure spot rates, par rates, and forward rates. First things first, what is the term structure of interest rates? In simple terms, it's the relationship between the interest rate or bond yield and different maturities. It helps us understand how rates change over time and what the market expects for future interest rates. And to do this, we use three main curves, spot rates, par rates, and forward rates. Think of spot rates as the purest form of interest rates. These are the default risk-free rates for zero coupon bonds that don't pay any interest until they mature. It's like buying a $100 gift card today for $95. You don't get anything until it matures, but you know exactly what you're getting. The spot curve shows the yield to maturity on the x-axis against time to maturity on the y-axis. The curve's shape can vary. Upward sloping normal curve. Long-term yields are higher than short-term yields. It's like expecting more reward for locking your money away longer. Flat curve. Short-term and long-term yields are similar, signaling stability or uncertainty about future rates. In case of inverted curves, short-term yields are higher than long-term yields, often a warning sign that investors expect lower rates in the future. Think recession signals. Imagine the U.S. Treasury issuing a 10-year zero-coupon bond at a 3% spot rate while a 2-year bond yields 1.5%. The 10-year rate reflects the compensation investors demand for locking in their money for a longer period considering inflation and economic risks. All right, let's break down how we actually construct these yield curves. It's a bit like putting together a puzzle where each piece represents different maturities and interest rates. Spot rate curve, derived from default risk-free zero coupon bonds across all maturities. Think of it as the baseline from which we derive other rates. Par yield curve, represents the yield to maturity for bonds priced at par value, face value. This is like comparing bonds that are perfectly priced, neither above nor below their face value. Forward yield curve. Now, this one's a bit tricky. The forward curve shows expected future interest rates derived from current spot rates. It's like the crystal ball of finance giving you insight into what the market thinks rates will be in the future. If the current one-year spot rate is 2% and the two-year spot rate is 3%, the one-year forward rate starting a year from now can be derived from these spot rates. It tells investors what they might earn if they roll over short-term bonds instead of locking into a longer-term bond today. All right, let's tackle the concept of the maturity structure of interest rates and how spot rates play into this. When we're talking about bond yields, numerous factors come into play. Things like credit risk, currency impact, liquidity, and even taxes. These elements can cause significant variations in bond yields. Take, for instance, a bond from Romania offering a higher yield compared to a German bond. 
This difference is often due to heightened credit risk and currency stability concerns in Romania as opposed to Germany. The term structure of interest rates gives us a roadmap explaining how the yields vary with the maturity of bonds. Ideally, to analyze this term structure, you'd use zero coupon bonds that are default risk free, like those from developed market sovereign bonds, across various maturities because these bonds exclude factors like periodic coupon payments, focusing purely on maturity effects. Term structure analysis helps us understand the relationship between the time until a bond matures and its yield. It's crucial here to compare bonds that are identical in every way except for their maturity dates. The perfect data for this kind of analysis would include default risk-free zero coupon bonds. Uh, these are your spot rates across various maturities. Typically, analysts use developed market sovereign bonds for this purpose because of their low credit risk. Now onto the spot curve analysis. This involves plotting zero coupon bonds yield to maturity against their maturity periods. The shape of this spot curve can tell us a lot about the current economic environment and market expectations. Generally, you'll see three types of curves. Upward sloping, which is considered normal and indicates higher long-term yields. Flat, where short and long-term yields are about the same, and inverted, where short-term yields outpace the long-term ones, which could signal economic uncertainty ahead. Imagine plotting the yield to maturity of zero coupon government bonds against their time to maturity. This graph, often referred to as the spot curve, can adopt various shapes, upward sloping or normal, flat or even inverted, each telling a different story about investor expectations and economic conditions. But here's the kicker. While we use these ideal models for analysis, real-world government bonds often include coupons and come with varying levels of liquidity and tax treatments. So in the real world, most government bonds do pay coupons and come with different levels of liquidity and tax treatments. Because of this, yield curves are usually built from the most recently issued or actively traded bonds. This helps ensure that the yield curve reflects the most accurate and up-to-date market conditions. However, there are always gaps. Some maturities may not have corresponding bond issues, requiring analysts to interpolate to fill these gaps. Additionally, when comparing money market instruments to bonds, we often convert their yields to a bond equivalent basis for a fair comparison. Let's talk about how bonds are priced using spot rates. These rates provide us with default risk-free interest rates for various maturities, essential for calculating a bond's price. The calculation involves discounting the bond's future cash flows, both the coupon payments and the principal repayment at these spot rates according to each cash flow's maturity. This method ensures that there are no arbitrage opportunities, meaning no chance to make a risk-free profit simply from price discrepancies. Bond pricing using spot rates are considered the default risk-free interest rates for various maturities. The no arbitrage condition in finance dictates that the price of a bond should be such that there's no free lunch meaning it's set at a level where buying or selling it for immediate profit isn't possible. This price is calculated by discounting a bond's future cash flows, both the periodic coupon payments and the principal repayment, at the spot rates corresponding to their respective maturities. Unlike using a single yield to maturity, this method uses multiple discount rates, providing a more detailed and precise valuation of the bond based on current market conditions. Not all bonds are default risk free. For those with credit risk, an additional spread is typically added to the spot rates. This spread compensates for the higher risk of default, 
altering the bond's yield upwards to reflect the true cost of borrowing or the real return to the investor. Combining all these elements gives us a comprehensive understanding of how the bond market operates from basic yield analysis to complex price calculations using spot rates. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for any finance professional looking to master the art of investment and credit analysis. Let's delve into the intricacies of par and forward rates in the bond market, concepts that are essential for understanding how bonds are priced and the expectations of future interest rates. Par rates from spot rates. Starting with par rates, these are the yields to maturity of bonds that make the present value of their future cash flows equal to their face value, typically set at 100. This means if a bond is trading at par, its market price equals its face value. Analysts often utilize par rates derived from spot rates to minimize distortions that might occur in actual bond pricing due to market anomalies or temporary influences. To calculate a par rate from spot rates, we use a formula that iterates through various spot rates to solve for the coupon payment that will price the bond at par. Here's the math. The formula to determine the one year forward rate starting three years from today is expressed. The calculation assumes the bond's price will be exactly 100 at each coupon payment date, simplifying the yield to maturity to this pair rate. By determining these rates sequentially for different maturities based on given spot rates, we can establish a clear pricing framework for bonds issued at par, ensuring that each calculated par rate, when used as both the coupon and the yield to maturity, results in a bond price of 100. Let's move on to bond pricing using spot rates. This is where it gets interesting. Pricing bonds using spot rates ensures there's no room for arbitrage, meaning no risk-free profit opportunities from mispricing. The price of a bond is calculated by discounting each of its future cash flows, coupons, and principal at the corresponding spot rate for each maturity. Bond pricing using spot rates is quite similar to what we discussed under par rates. Formula looks like this where PMT is the periodic coupon payment, Z is the spot rate for that period, and FV is the face value of the bond. You discount each cash flow by its respective spot rate and add them up to find the bond's price. A quick note here, yield to maturity pricing and spot rate pricing can give you the same total present value but they differ in their approach. YTM assumes a single discount rate for all cash flows, while spot rate pricing uses a different rate for each period. Why this matters. Spot rate pricing gives a more accurate picture of a bond's value, especially in markets where interest rates vary significantly across maturities. The total PV is the same, but each cash flows discount rate differs between the two methods. Now let's shift gears to par rates. Par rates are yields that make the present value of a bond's cash flows equal its face value, usually $100. To find the par rate for a bond, you solve for the coupon payment that prices the bond at par given the spot rates for its cash flows. The formula makes sure that if the par rate is correct, the bond will trade at its face value of 100. All right, now on to the forward rates. These rates help investors figure out the expected returns for different investment horizons by calculating the break-even rate between investing in a series of shorter-term bonds versus one longer-term bond. Say you want the one-year forward rate starting three years from today, known as 3Y1Y. You'd need the three-year and four-year spot rates to calculate this. The formula looks like this. Here, ZA and ZB 
are spot rates for periods A and B, and IFR is the implied forward rate between those periods. Forward rates are derived from spot rates. These represent the expected future interest rates between different time periods and are crucial for investors planning their investment horizon. Forward rates indicate the reinvestment rates that would equate the return of investing in a series of shorter term bonds with a single longer term bond. Lastly, the interplay between spot and forward rates is a foundational concept in bond pricing. Spot rates for any term can be derived by geometrically linking forward rates covering the same total period. For example, a two-year spot rate can be obtained by compounding the one-year spot rate with the one-year forward rate starting one year from now. This method allows investors and analysts to construct or deconstruct the yield curve, providing a detailed view of expected future rates and helping in pricing bonds more accurately using these forward rates. These concepts, while complex, are essential tools in the arsenal of any finance professional, providing deep insights into how bonds are valued and how interest rate expectations are set in the financial markets. Understanding and applying these principles allows for more informed investment decisions and better risk management in bond portfolios. To wrap things up, let's talk about how these three curves, spot, par, and forward, relate to each other. Upward sloping spot curve. When the spot curve is upward sloping, the par curve sits below it and the forward curve is above it, signaling expectations for rising future interest rates. Flat spot curve here, the par and forward curves are generally equal to the spot curve, indicating no major changes in interest rates are expected. Downward sloping spot curve, inverted. The par curve is above the spot curve and the forward curve is below it, suggesting a decline in future interest rates. Think of an upward sloping curve as the market saying, we think things will heat up. While a flat curve is like, no big changes ahead, and an inverted curve is like, batten down the hatches, we see a storm coming. And there you have it. Understanding the term structure of interest rates and the relationship between spot, par, and forward curves is essential for making smart investment decisions. These concepts help you predict market movements assess bond valuations, and strategize like a pro. Keep practicing these calculations and soon you'll be reading these curves like a seasoned analyst. Until next time, stay curious and keep crunching those numbers.